we've come such a long way, but there really is so much more work to be done. A couple of weeks ago, for my audience viewers, uh, we were able to visit uh, one of these dispensaries, uh, the newest retail location that's opened up with um, Tai Cheng of Aloha Green Ap Apothecary. Let's take a look at what um, Tai has to say about this new retail area. Thank you, Ty, for having us here at Aloha Green Apothecary's third retail dispensing site. Uh, this has been a long journey for you and Aloha Green. So tell me about 2013 and 2015 first. Thank you, Representative. I'm glad that you're here today with your team. Uh, it's really exciting for Aloha Green uh, Apothecary this year. We're opening our third uh, location here on Oahu. It's our largest location. It's right by the uh, International Airport here. We're right next to the uh, rental, rental car agencies. We think this is a, a great place because of the just where all the highways and uh, where people are able to come into the city and out of the city. It's one of those stops where when returning uh, residents come back to Hawaii, they can stop by our stores, and for even visitors who do uh, intend to come to Hawaii, uh, maybe one day they'll be able to take part in purchasing uh, cannabis as well. So this is your third dispensary retail site, so where are your other two, and where is your production center? Right, so when we first started uh, in 2016, we opened uh, the first uh, dispensary here in Honolulu. It was located, uh, it is located still at Interstate Building on South King Street, uh, at King Street in Kiamoku. Uh, we have about 1,800 square feet there uh, with four POS. That's our original store. Uh, our second store was in Waikiki. We were the first dispensary to open in the Waikiki Business District. Uh, that location is located at Saratoga and Kalakaua, mm -hmm. right across uh, from the post office and next to eggs and things. Uh, it's been a great location for us, uh, especially with a lot of the locals returning to Waikiki since the pandemic mm -hmm. has uh, limited tourism in the area. And uh, our cultivation center is near the North Shore. It's uh, between Wahiwa and the North Shore and on old uh, Dole Pineapple land that, uh, that uh, we've leased to uh, grow cannabis. So tell me about this space. Um, what are some of the new innovations you've adopted? And then just tell us about some of your products here. Yeah, so the airport location, you know, we, we were uh, unlucky, I guess, to be building out during the pandemic period. And so we had to make sure that uh, patients uh, were safe, especially uh, medical cardholder mm -hmm. patients who uh, 100, almost 100% have some type of underlying condition that can be adversely affected by uh, COVID-19. And so uh, we built this dispensary out so that we would limit the period of time that people would spend indoors. We tried to uh, uh, create as many touchless surfaces as possible. Mm -hmm. uh, we also kind of maintain our sanitation practices that we have at the other stores, but we incorporated sliding doors uh, mm -hmm. into the uh, design so that people didn't have to touch uh, any items as they, as they came in and out. Uh, we also built it uh, built out a outdoor lanai where patients can wait outdoors instead of coming into an enclosed or indoor space. And we also have our new uh, pickup window, which is a small uh, clean room where uh, one patient can come in at, at a time and quickly pick up their medicine without even having to enter a dispensary or indoor space with uh, other people inside. So very clean, modern looking in here. Yeah, this is a, a slight departure from our first two dispensaries. The color scheme is, is similar to our other dispensaries, but uh, we went with a much uh, brighter and cleaner look than our previous dispensaries. Still not completely finished uh, decorating. We're gonna create a lot of warmness though when we're finished. So we, there's, some, there's some art that we're thinking of adding in and some fun elements, but so far it's been, uh, it's been a blast. Well, the difference between Aloha Green and some of the other licenses is that we've really focused on concentrated products and manufactured cannabis products. Mm -hmm. uh, I'd say at Aloha Green, our sales are about 50-50 between flour and concentrates. And uh, we lead the market when it comes to producing those concentrates. And so if you look at our menu, we do carry uh, not only uh, multiple tiers of flour mm -hmm. that have various levels of THC as well as CBD. We also uh, produce the largest selection of cartridges and or uh, safe pulmonary administrative cartridges here in Hawaii. Uh, we have uh, ethanol based, we have solvent based, we have uh, CO2 based cartridges as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, we also carry hard concentrates, which is also the largest selection here on Oahu, including rosin, live resins, hash and shatter, and really all these different ways of producing the product. It just depends on the type of solvent, if any, that is utilized in the manufacturing. 
We've also pr started producing uh, a number of different lozenges. And then we have a bunch of other kind of tincture topicals and body oils that, that we produce for people that have topical ailments. Mm -hmm. We do have temperature checks now at all our locations for not only the patients, but our employees that are attending. And we have free masks or face shields that are available mm -hmm. for patients when they come in if they happen to forget their own. And all our uh, staff, of course, wear uh, protective gear or PPE that is uh, uh, suitable for their, for their role. So like any small business, the medical cannabis dispensaries really felt the shock of the economic impact of the pandemic. And you know, you folks were just a kind of a burgeoning industry. Can you talk about like the size of your business, you know, how that kind of affected some of your employees with the shutdown and everything? I think the local community has really uh, stepped up and shown that cannabis is a large uh, part of the Hawaiian economy and that it can continue to grow. Uh, we saw sales increase during the pandemic. There were oh, periods, there were periods of panic buying uh, prior to uh, the essential business designation. There were periods uh, or there were days when products were almost sold out because there was hoarding that was occurring, similar to the toilet paper crisis oh. that we had and water and, and things like that where people are concerned that they're not able to purchase those items in, in the future. Uh, but once we were able to receive that essential business designation, we found that uh, patients uh, came to us about once a week, uh, once a week or every other week to uh, keep their supplies of cannabis you know, at a, at a suitable level. We're seeing decriminalization of cannabis, which I think is very, very important. If we have any hope of reaching uh, a point where Hawaii has adult use sales or recreational sales, then really we need to address the social injustice that uh, prosecution for cannabis has created within our community. And so mm -hmm. decrim is a very important part and next step, I think that the, the, that the legislature needs to really look at. So, you know, we're watching the federal government closely, but is there any sense um, within the medical cannabis community just more nationally about what some of the prospects are on, on the national level? Yeah, we, we uh, very closely follow what's happening at the federal uh, level. And, you know, we're, we're excited that uh, Biden-Harris administration uh, took over from the last administration. Um, Vice President Harris has very, you know, liberal views, relatively speaking, uh, when it comes to cannabis, even though she was a prosecutor for much of her career of time and uh, you know we don't disagree with President Biden's approach as well of having more evidence when it comes to uh, the legalization of cannabis uh, it does seem like that uh, the Attorney General that is uh, coming into power will allow the states to uh, further their state programs to the best of their abilities to see whether or not uh, this is the, the right path that the federal government should take and I do hope that banking uh, legislation which seems to be something that could happen in this uh, upcoming session or the next session uh, could occur, which would really open up the ability for businesses like ours to borrow money or to access to, you know, to even just access uh, banking services to pay our employees to uh, to be able to take out loans on, you know, uh, building out our business. Mm -hmm. So any last takeaways for our audience who is very interested um, about medical cannabis? Um, any, any last words or takeaways? Yeah, I think that uh, the program has been relatively quite successful when you compare it to other uh, nascent programs that started in other states. I think that it is coming to the point where the licensees are at a position where we do welcome more involvement within mm -hmm. the industry. The only way for the industry to get to a place where a deep crim can occur or adult use can occur is if more stakeholders become uh, uh, vocal in how we build out these programs. And so I think I, I'm really excited for cannabis in Hawaii over the, for the next few years, and I think uh, there are going to be many changes that are going to occur, and I think it will be for the, for the best of the community and for, for all businesses. Thank you so much, and thank you for sharing this wonderful space with us. Thank you. Wow, what a modern, advanced establishment they have over there. It was so interesting to get a sense of what it's like on the dispensary ownership end. Mm -hmm.